Hi there, thanks for joining me again today. I just wanted to show you that um, I clean my plate with a baby wipe. I find it's the easiest and it's available there. And it usually takes two baby wipes to sort of clear the paint off. I could have made do with just one here, but I chose to do another one. So the paint has dried and our leaf is ready on the big leaf. And now we're going to do some background um, before we do some more leaves. So I'm so pleased you've joined me for another day. And I'm just getting myself ready with my piece of kitchen towel and my paints, choosing my brushes. And I want to do the wet on wet technique again for the background. I want to make it a very pale blue and I'm using this kind of, it's called a mop brush um, to just apply clean water. But before I do that, I'm mixing up a pale blue and I'm using the woodland paint and I am using the color called Stream. I'm sorry that you can't see it on screen. I've just brought it in now. And I'm making quite a watery mixture of this. I really love these Prima marketing paints. I must say, I would love to have all the sets. So I've just opened up Amazon Affiliate Marketing. So if you should choose to follow any of my links to any of the products I've used, then I'll get a few cents for anything that you should buy off my links, but it doesn't cost you one cent more. So it's a win-win on both sides. And I'm planning if I do earn anything with my Amazon affiliate marketing, then I'm planning on trying to buy products for this channel so that I can share them with you. So I feel like it will be a joint effort. So I'm doing exactly as I did with the leaf. I'm putting down water first, but I decided not to do the whole background with just plain water because it dried so quickly on the leaf. So I've just done this one little area and I've got that piece of plastic and the dirty spots you see are actually on the piece of plastic, not on the page. So I'm just adding this very watery pale blue stream color as a sky background. I don't want it to be smooth. I want it to just be sort of fluffy looking so that it resembles a sky, a sky you get all so many different skies. They're quite wonderful things, aren't they? And uh, I thought that I want this to be sort of fluffy looking with sort of a few darker spots, a few paler spots and just the look of the sky. So it's going on very easily with the background being wet. It's blending so nicely. That's a, a boon from having the wet on wet technique. You get that sort of blend. So now I'm rinsing the brush again and going to wet the next part of the background with plain water. I'd love to know if you have done any watercolors in this book or if you prefer using a water brush pen or what your choice is when you're doing something like this. So I'm just wetting the background with clean water. And you guys must be starting to move into autumn. I know in America you call it fall. We're slowly moving into spring and my husband planted some sweet peas and I'm so excited they're my favorite flower. He especially planted them for me. So I really, really hope that they flower nicely. He prepared the soil very well and everything. So I'm really excited for that. When do you guys start things like your Christmas shopping and everything like that? Do you buy a lot online? Do you go into the store? What's, how do you approach Christmas shopping? 
I always, every Christmas, I make a decision that next year it will be better than this year. <laughs> and I will have saved enough money and everything will work out fine. But it doesn't seem like it's ending up that way for me this year. So we'll just have to see. So I'm just adding a little bit more in places that I felt needed a bit of a boost of color there. And I'm adding to this newly wet area with the blue. I could speed this up, but I thought that for a change for this color along, I'll do it in real time. So it gives you more of a chance to actually color along and do it with me. I think that for the rest of this background, I'm going to put on a little bit of music for you to listen to. I hope you enjoyed that. That was music that I, I have a subscription to Epidemic Sound uh, and I love their choice of music. I've heard so many different things from them. I fast forwarded or cut out a little bit of this here because it's all pretty much of a muchness. I've wet the background and am just filling it with this pale blue. I do apologize if the film is going a bit in and out of focus. I'm not entirely sure why. I hope that it's just here when I'm editing and that when the film is finished that it looks right. Now I'm adding a little bit of extra blue to certain places just to darken it up and making sure that I blend the colors together. So now I'm cleaning no, I, did, I decided not to clean the blue off there. There's very little left, and I'm going to add some green over the blue just to get a slightly blue-green 
for some of the other leaves. So I've got the Dale of Rani paints here again and I have put a link to the set and to the woodland set underneath in the more information. So this is the sap green that I'm mixing here with the blue that was left. I really like this little set. You can do so much with these colors. I take this with me when I go on holiday. So you can see it's in a bit of a mess, but it comes with quite a cute little brush as well. And of course you can use a water brush with it. So I'm mixing up quite a lot of this sap green. And I decided to add just a little bit of Payne's Gray into that. Payne's Gray and Blue are sort of similar, just to darken it up a little bit. And now I need to just wet the leaf, but I decided just to use this brush, even though there is a tiny little bit of the green left on it. So now there was first a wash put down on here, which I'm afraid I had to cut because I didn't realize I was blocking nearly the entire picture with my head. As usual, I was poking my eyes just about into the piece I was doing. Um, so I just I've cut some of that and this now I'm going over it again where the page is wet with this richer um, mix of paint. So I again want the middle a bit darker um, and then I decided I maybe want this edge a bit darker because it's it's in shadow, the other leaf, the, the big leaf is over it. But I just continued painting and sort of feeling my way as I went. I'm very kind of, I probably need to learn to plan more with my painting. I tend to do things intuitively. And I decided to take some straight from the pan, mix it and just have it dark and not watered down and hoping it will bleed out. You can see as it softens in the wet, in the wet paper. I love that. I love I love it when watercolor does that and gone down the edges as well. And I'm trying to sort of keep a bit of the shape as well, but then I just decided to do this line and see what would happen, whether it would feather up or not. And keeping to the flicks I'm doing are sort of trying to be in the direction that those lines are going. And then here I'm using the darker color for the shadow. So I'd love to know from you guys, do you like these videos in real time or do you prefer them fast forwarded? Or do you like, as I'm doing a little bit of both, some things you fast forward and sometimes you do it in real time. So now there's three more bits of leaf. Um, as you can see, I sort of dried off the, the water because I wanted to lift some of that paint up. Decided it was too much and then I want that to bleed out in itself and I wanted to kind of encourage the other side to move a bit more. I sometimes think 
One of the things one needs to learn when doing watercolour is to leave it alone and stop working it so much. It's one of the mistakes I make, and I can see it um, doing this narration and watching myself paint as I do it. And I can see, oh, Elizabeth, why didn't you just leave that? So now we're doing this last leaf, and I decided to get a little bit less fussy with it and just paint it. I have thought in my mind about doing some semi-autumn shades, sort of a bit of red-brown on on the leaves as well, so I do add them a little bit later on. You'll see. The page is curling up a little bit, so it's lucky that was dry. Okay, I'm excited to do this hummingbird, I must say. I decided with the big leaf, which has got those tiny little leaves, going over it that I would just color, I would just paint over the little leaves rather than trying, trying to be too careful. And then I'll do those small leaves in gouache, which will be able to go over. Gouache is much, it's not translucent like watercolor, so I will be able to go over what I've painted here with those little leaves that are going, that are placed above the big leaf. So here I bring in some brown, which I used from the Woodlands palette, I used a color called Redwood and I dropped that in. And then I decided I actually quite liked it, so I carried it through more and decided to put some in there as well, just a hint of it. I like the way the, I suppose one would call it an organic feel that watercolor gives to an organic thing like a leaf. So the way the colors would change, they wouldn't necessarily be smooth. So I like the way the watercolor does that. So as we're reaching the end of this color along, I want to say thanks again very much to everybody for watching and thank you for subscribing to the channel and for your wonderful support. And thanks so much to those of you that have been incredibly kind and given coffee donations. Um, I'm going to, in one of my videos soon, I've, what I've done with the coffee donations is I've bought three Etsy digital coloring packs or pictures and I'm going to download those and I'm going to show you what I got so that you can see what has happened to the money you've done to support the channel. It's wonderful of you to do that and I'm incredibly grateful. So I quite like how this has turned out and um, of course it's nowhere near finished um, and I'll be back again tomorrow with the next one of the colour along where I think I'll do the bark and the seeds or fruit.
whatever those things are. Okay, thank you very, very, very much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now.